on guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my throttle relocation bracket. I'm going to be giving you the dimensions, the materials and how to fit it. So if you like the look of it, you can go and make your own. Let's go and take a look. Now then, before we jump into the bracket, let's have a look at what the car originally had from factory. You had the big spider bracket, as some people call it, that bolts on top of the rocker cover. In my opinion, it's a bit big, it's a bit ugly, and it also blocks those beautiful red 16 valve letters on the rocker cover that we all want to see. Now, also, I'm very aware that there are other throttle relocation brackets on the market, but I wanted to make my own my personal design which will also see incorporates a return spring on it as well so you can lose another one of the brackets that bolts to the inlet manifold which tidies things up a little bit more in that area so without further ado let's get the bracket off the job and have a little look at how i made it now then let's first of all start with this bracket that goes down to the t-vis you're going to have to cut this one down yourself because all cars are going to be slightly different. Because if you go a little bit longer on this one or a little bit shorter, then it's going to need to be modified and tweaked a little bit. So that one you're going to have to do yourself. Now then, the length of the angle coming off the throttle body. What I did is I held the cable in position onto the new side of the throttle body linkage and I pulled the cable round. And I put the nuts in the middle of the adjustment and I thought that's going to sit about there. So then I measured that. But if you don't want to measure it, I can tell you that it is 130 millimetres long. Okay. Now also another important thing is the offset on this. You'll notice that the width of angle I've used, if I were to put the hole on the angle section itself, it would have sat too far inboard and it would have fouled. So I've measured out a little bit wider. The center line of the hole is 28 millimeters from the edge of the bracket here. So 28 millimeters from center line of the hole to here. The distance of the hole up and down, we are around about 18 millimeters down from the top of the bracket. Now then, this one, like I say, when you put your cable in, you'll be able to clamp that in position, take it off the job, and then weld it on. This throttle return spring is probably the most crucial one on the job. Because what you need to do is you need to take a measurement. Because obviously that return spring on the original bracket, which is here, that went onto, imagine the inlet manifold is here. It went onto the inlet manifold in this orientation. So what you'll need to do, keep the original bracket on the inlet manifold and then measure the distance, center line hole of this mounting point to center line of the throttle body rotating assembly. And that will tell you how much factory stretch there was on the spring. That will now give me the original orientation of this bracket here in relation to the throttle body. So we've got the right amount of original factory stretch on the return spring so that it's going to return it under the same amount of tension that it would have done when it was installed. Also the spacing as well, clearance issues and also you want that, that spring to run in line like it used to which is why I've gone quite wide with this section. From a measurement point of view it is about I would say 35 millimeters out from the edge of the bracket itself so those are the important measurements if you will i mean hopefully if you're going to have a go at making one of these yourself you'll be able to go into the depth and measurements and things like that to make it personal to your own car um but this gives you a heads up on the little pitfalls and the things that you want to avoid the fact that it's made out of angle, it's nice and strong as well. It's all MIG welded up. And like I say, I haven't flushed the welds back to keep them nice and strong. And this little stiffener that goes down onto the T-Viz, in my opinion, finishes the job off nicely. Now then, 
This one mounts onto the throttle body, like we said, and this one mounts onto the T-Vis. Throttle body, inlet manifold, T-Vis and engine are all one entity. They move together. So it's not like these two are going to be moving independent and the bracket's going to shear. So that's the bracket in a bit more detail. Let's now go over to the car and look at the modification we need to do to the throttle body to accept the cable coming in the other way. Now then, originally, the bracket at the top, the cable came round to here. And that pulling action turned into a pulling action here on this little ball joint. And it pulled the throttle open. Now, the fact that this is on a pivot, the bottom going to the right means the top goes to the left. So if your cable was mounted here, it would pull it open. So what I've done is I have drilled a hole in here all the way through to the other side, slightly bigger than the diameter of the ball on the end of the cable. And I've also filed a little slot into it here. So what you can now do is run the cable through and then it sits in like that. And then when you pull your cable, warm, warm, warm. And now that we're gonna have our bracket on with our return spring on here, we know that it's gonna return it under the same tension that it always used to. Now there is obviously return spring built into the throttle body, but this is an additional helper spring. But at the same time, it's still important to get it the same length as what it was from factory. So let's pop it back on the car and check that it moves as much as factory. Another key consideration is movement. Now before, as we know, the bar on the spider bracket would pull that bracket all the way open. So wide open throttle is on the stopper on the throttle body there. Now what I did is I pulled this all the way open and then I scribed a line on the edge of the inlet manifold, a physical mark with a scriber or a pen so that I know where wide open throttle is. So that when I put my new bracket on and got in the car and put my foot on the pedal completely, foot down, I know that I'm getting wide open throttle because you also got to think about the actuation of the throttle body. Because the last thing you want to do is make a lovely looking bracket and then you put your foot flat on the floor and you're only getting half pedal. That's not what you want. So there are a lot of things to consider when you're making your own bracket. Let's have a quick look at the rerouting of our bracket because originally it came up in this bracket here and it came up and around. I think there was another bracket around about here that took it up into the spider bracket. Now I have rerouted mine underneath the heater hoses, underneath the gear linkage as well. Now obviously be careful because that gear linkage is a moving part. You do not want it anywhere near touching it. You need the clearance. So I've run it down underneath the battery tray and then up the side by the starter motor. So it comes up and it sits on like that. So from the other side, you see throttle cable just appearing from underneath the battery tray, straight up and in. So a little bit more hidden as well. The first thing you want to do is pop your cable on. Then we can pop the cable in there and that one on the throttle body like so. Loosen these nuts off and we'll play around with the nuts later. Cheeky. Then the bracket that goes into the T-vis and then to fit the nut onto the throttle body it's easier just to remove the air trunking just so you can get access completely so that you go on nice and square that one goes on there you can then tighten up the nut onto the T-vis And tighten up our throttle body whilst holding it still. Then grab our throttle return spring, which goes in there and on there. And then regarding our cable with our adjuster nuts, 
We want it so we've just got a tiny, tiny little bit of loose cable there. And also I put a little bit of effort into the design of the offset of this bracket so that the cable runs nice and straight onto the throttle body as well. Nip that one up, little bit of slack, absolutely fine. And return spring as well. So there we go. And let's go put our foot on the pedal and see what it does. So there we have it guys, a fully functioning throttle relocation bracket for your Mark 1 MR2. Hopefully this video was detailed and informative enough to give you the confidence to have a go at making your own bracket at home. And if you've got any further questions on mine, drop it down in the comments section, I'll do my best to answer it. As always guys, thanks very much for tuning in, thanks for watching, see you soon. Hi, I'm James from Resto Nation. This is outro number 12. And I'm running out of memory on my camera. Skitter, dirt, dirt, dirt.